Okay, so I welcome you to the part two of the 22 parts that no one tells you about Canada study relocation. Okay, if you have not watched the part one, in the part one series, that is where I talk about, that is where I talk about, about uh, 11, 11 different parts, 11 different truths, okay, that no one tells you about Canada study routes relocation okay so if you have not watched the part one if you have not watched the part one just go to my channel you will see the part one of this series there okay so i will be starting part two here okay okay these are ugly truths that no one tells you about canada study relocation okay so from 12 to 20 so number 12 now the 12 Fact that you should know is that there are two types of IETS. Okay, there are two types of IETS. We have academic and we have general. Academic is the IETS that you need to write if you want to apply for admission. Okay, if you are using IETS to apply for admission, you write academic. But Majority of schools, okay, I keep on saying this, majority of schools have waived IETS for people coming from an English-speaking country. Okay, English-speaking country like Nigeria, like UK, like US. So far, your uh, previous education have been taught in English language and you can prove it. Okay, you will not need that academic. But to become a permanent resident, after you have relocated, you need IETS. That is where you now need the second type. Okay, that is uh, what is called a general IETS. So you need general IETS to become a permanent resident. You may not need academic IETS to secure admission. Take note of that. And take note of this. This is another thing that no one tells you. Irrespective, irrespective of which route you use to enter Canada, whether through job or far, whether through study, whether through visiting, I don't want to know. To become a permanent resident, you need that general IETS. Okay. Number 13, you need money. <laughs> you need money. You need money. You need money. You need money. You need money for for fun. You need money for school fees. You need money for you need money to feed. You need money to buy textbooks. You need money to transport. Even after you have relocated, you need money to feed. You need money to transport. You need money to buy books. You need money. You need money. Okay. I have a video where I did breakdown of how much you will need, how much you should be looking at to budget. For relocation to study, I will drop the link to that video in the description below this video. Okay, how much you should budget? Okay, when you are planning towards relocating to study. Okay, so you will need money. You need you need money. Don't let anybody deceive you. Even if you get scholarship, you will still need more money. Except that scholarship is very big, whereby it covers uh, covers your tuition fee, covers your your proof of fund, which is very rare, okay? It's very rare. Even for funding are available for people going for research, research-based uh, program at master's or PhD level, okay? When we talk of full funding, full scholarship, okay? So most times, even if you get scholarship, you need, you still need money. You can only sub subtract the amount given to you as scholarship from the amount that you will need. Okay, despite getting scholarship, most times you will still need money. You still need money. You need money. Forget that uh, if I get scholarship, it will be cheaper for me to relocate. I'll be able to afford it. No. Scholarship will only cover certain part of your study, maybe school fees. Two for one is there. Two for one is there. And maybe the scholarship. Does not even cover the whole uh, the whole tuition fee. 
So take note, you will need more. Like I said, I have a video where I did break down, okay, of how much we need for football fund, how much we need for school fees and all of that. That is a video that I did on that. So check the description below this video to check it, okay? Number 14. Number 14. If you are planning to relocate to study, if you are planning to relocate to study, you cannot just wake up today and say you are looking for, you want to relocate this 2023 and you want to start now, 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 I want to get admission now, now, relocate now, now. No. You plan ahead. Canadian schools normally take people January and September. January and September. There are schools that do have May, May, uh, May intake that take people by May. But majorly it's January and September. Like I said, some schools do take people by May. Okay? So now, let's say you want to relocate, you want to relocate by September. You should have started your your processing. You should have started looking for admission by October, November of the previous year or December, January. October, November of the previous year, you should have been looking for admission, okay, or January of that year, because that September admission will close by maybe February, March, April. If you are relocating by September, you cannot wake up by September or wake up by August and say you want to do for admission, you, want, you are relocating next month to study. No. Don't make that mistake. And if you are relocating by January, you should be, you should have been looking for admission by, let's say, February, March, April of the previous year. The reason why they did it that way is that they want you to have enough enough room <laughs> sorry they want to have enough room enough time to process your visa in case of any 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 issues along the way so start your application like eight months ahead if you are relocating by May, you should have started your application by october by september of the previous year Okay, so that by the time you get admission, you have enough time to process your visa and prepare yourself. They want you to prepare yourself. So September admission will close by maybe December or October or January. So take a look of that. You start to plan ahead, like eight months to one year ahead. Okay, that's what I recommend you do. So if you want to start, if you want to relocate to study, you have to start now, start now, start now, start now, start, start processing now. The best time to start is now. <laughs> Go and apply for whatever admission that is open, okay? Number 15 now. You can do your processing by yourself. Yes. That is one of the advantages of study routes, uh, relocation. Stop saying uh, you want to give money to agents. They are charging you millions of naira. You can't know. To look for admission, you can do it yourself. To process your visa, you can do it yourself. You can do it yourself. If you don't want to stress yourself too much while you are doing it yourself, you can get a self-help guide, okay? There is this self-help guide that I do recommend. It is called Japa System. It contains all the step-by-step -step you follow to secure admission, to process visa, to secure scholarship, to secure supervisor, to write your SOP, you know? And the rest, the package is loaded. So if you don't want to stress yourself searching for searching Google, searching YouTube, and get confused at the end of the, of the day because you can get confused, yes, it's possible. So if you, if you don't want to fall, into, the, into this category of confusion, if you don't want to be confused, why in the process you can get that Japa system, okay? I will drop a link to get the Japa system in the description below this video, okay? To know more about the Japa system. So you can do the processing by yourself. Even if you don't get Japa system, you can do the processing by yourself. Japa system will only fasten your, your, your process, okay? Something that would have, taking you a year to do. Japa system will make it, 
you make it make make you to be able to do it in just one month, for instance. Okay, because we are following a step by step guide that was prepared by, by somebody that has done it before. Somebody that has done that processing before. Okay, so that's the thing. Number sixteen now. The school you are applying to must be a TLI and postgraduate work permit eligible. Don't let anybody deceive you. If the school is not a TLI and it's not postgraduate work permit eligible, don't go to such school. DLI means Designated Learning Institute. Okay, these are schools that are approved by Canadian government, Canadian immigration to host international students. So if your school is not a DLI, don't go to such school. Because if you go to such school, you might have issue processing your visa. Even if you eventually get your visa approved, we have issue after you have finished schooling. You might not be able to work after that. And your family might not be able to relocate with you. We have to go and look for a DLI again in Canada. And PGWP eligible means the school or the course must uh must allow you to be able to secure work permit after study if a school is pgwp eligible it means after your study you can secure a work permit to work full time now okay while you are studying you'll be working part-time like i said in the part one you are working part-time 20 hours a week but after your study, you can now work full time, enjoy yourself and all. Okay, so the school that you are attending must be postgraduate work permit eligible, PGWP eligible. If the school you attended is not PGWP eligible, then you will not be able to secure work permit after your study. You have to leave Canada. Money, energy will be wasted. Money, time, energy, all your efforts will be wasted. So make sure that the school you are attending is a DLI and it is postgraduate work permit eligible. And take note, it is not all schools that are DLI that are PGWP eligible. Don't make that mistake. A school can be a DLI and it's not be postgraduate work permit eligible. Take note of that. Don't worry, you can be asking, how can you check if a school is a DLI and um, PGWP eligible. I will drop a link to check also in the description of this video below, okay? I will drop a link to how, on how to check. Okay, there is a link to Canadian website where you can check schools, okay? I also did a video where I demonstrated how to check. So just watch the video and follow it then. You'll be able to check by yourself if your school is a DLI and it is for graduate work permit eligible. I think I talked about this uh, number 17, the previous truth, previous facts. Okay. Again, you don't need IETS if you previously if you previously study in English language, whereby you are coming from an English speaking country. So if you are coming from an English speaking country, you will not need IETS to study majorly, 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 99%. You will not need it for study. Again, to become a permanent resident, you need IETS. Don't let anybody deceive you, okay? If you're able to afford IETS to step your foot into Canada, if you're able to afford IETS to get admission and get your feet into Canada, we don't need IT, IETS to, see, to get admission at all. But to become a permanent resident inside Canada, you need general IETS. Okay, so number 18 now. This is for people that got their visa denied. If your visa got denied, you need what is called GCMS notes to know the exact reason why your visa got denied. GCMS notes is that document prepared by that visa officer that review your application. Okay, he will now clearly state and explain 
in a comprehensive way why he denied you visa. Okay, so this MS is that document that will show you, that will tell you the exact reason in details why your visa got denied. Most people, their visa got denied, they just read the letter after checking the status of the application and they reply, they, are, they reapply again, assuming that they got approved and they still got denied again. I know people that have tried five times. Why? Because they have not addressed the reason why the officer got denied. At the, at the, uh, the, the reason why the officer got denied previously. And they are reapplying. They are reapplying. So I always advise when your officer got denied, request for GCMS note so that you can know the reason why it got denied, address the reason, then reapply again. That's how to do it. And take note to get GCMS notes, you will have to wait for 30 days. Okay, I think because of these 30 days, some people will be in a hurry to reapply again and they will still get denied. So it will take you 30 days to get your GCMS note. And GCMS note can only be requested by somebody inside Canada. <laughs> you are not already inside Canada, but for you to get the GCMS note, you need somebody inside Canada to do it for you. Don't worry, there are companies that offer this service of GCMS notes. Okay? These companies are also inside the Japa system. If you have Japa system, get it. You will see the list of companies that offer this service. We recommend them. Contact them and ask them to help you request for your GCMS notes in case you experience FISA denial. In case you experience FISA visa denier, okay? And you can also just go, 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 search, go, go, search, go, go. You can come across these companies that help people to, that help people to uh, request for their GCMS notes, okay? So when your officer got denied, request for a GCMS note to know the reason why it got denied before you reapply. Or else, you will just be frustrated. Just be frustrated in applying. Hey, Canada is refusing to push visa. He refused me three times. Please. Have you done the right thing, Mr. Man? Okay. Number 19 now. People do ask me this question. Can I use my real estate as proof of fund? What you can use for proof of fund is liquid cash. What eyes can see inside your account. That's what visa officers want to see. That's what they want to see. Okay, we don't know what proof of fund is. Proof of fund is that amount of money that you need to show visa officers that when you get to Canada, you can take care of yourself without becoming a liability on their government over there. It is your money. They are not taking the money from you. They just want to see it. That's all. Okay, if you don't know, how much this amount is the proof of fund? I will drop a link also in the description in the description where I explain everything that you need to know about proof of fund. How much you will need as a single applicant, how much you will need when you are relocating with your family, and all of that. Okay. Number 20 now. Take note of this. One year program gives you one year work permit. So meaning, I think I talked about this in a, in a, in the part one. Okay, so one year program gives you one year work permits. Meaning you have to plan very well when you are going for a one year program. Okay, take note of the of the province you are going to. Because there are provinces that allow you to use just six month work experience. So let's say you get one year work permit, meaning you can work for six months and quickly use that six month work experience to apply for permanent residence in that province through their PMP, Provincial Nominee Program. Okay, so take note of this. Example of those provinces is uh, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, 
these are purposes that you can use six month work experience to apply for permanent residence. So, but if you are going to provinces like Ontario, for instance, this one year program might not favor you. Might not favor you because those provinces will require one year work experience, another requirement. So, and you have just one year to you have just one year to 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 put yourself together. Okay, so take note of that. We are going to provinces like Ontario and the rest. Okay, we are by they are requesting their PMP is requesting for one year work permits. Then one year program might not be okay for you. Okay, in such provinces, so two years, three years will be okay in that aspect. Number twenty one now. Do you know that you can become a permanent resident before you finish your study? <laughs> It's not a must that after you finish your study, that is only when you can become a permanent resident. It's a lie. There are people that become permanent resident before they finish their study. The thing is, before you finish your study, you can create, while studying, you can create your express entry profile. Nobody is stopping you from creating your express entry profile. Okay, so if you create your express entry profile and it happens that you meet the cutoff score for a particular draw, you meet cutoff score. You can eat your jackpot in Canada. Okay, so maybe when you are in your country, what was what was a uh, what was a uh, Making express entry to give you lower score is maybe you are having low IETS score. It now happens that when you get to Canada, you write another IET, IETS and you score a very high score. Okay, so maybe that now boosts your boost your chances in the express entry pool. Boom. Before you finish your study, you can you, you will you just become a permanent resident through express entry. By the way, even after studying. It, let me tell you this piece. Even after study, you will still need to apply through express entry. Mostly the Canadian experience class stream of express entry to become a permanent resident or through provincial nominating program. Those are the two major routes through which people normally become permanent residents after study. PMP or Canadian experience class. Okay, so like I said, know which one will be okay for you before you finish. Plan, 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 so that you can start planning. If it is the Canadian experience class, open your express entry profile on time and, you know, get your document ready and all. So if you meet the requirement of express entry, why inside Canada, while you are studying, you can become a permanent resident. Okay, the reason why uh the reason why people normally advise you to relocate to study is that when you when you study in Canada, that Canadian education experience will give you more points inside the express entry pool. That's the only difference. The same express entry you are applying for in your own country is the same express entry you're going to apply for over there. But because you are still in your own country, you study outside Canada, that that's, didn't give you enough points that you want that can, that can boost your chances. Now you have Canadian education, Canadian education, uh, education experience. If you boost your points, you now you also have work experience inside Canada. All these things will boost your points inside express entry. That's just the major reason why they ask you to relocate to study so that you can easily become permanent resident because it boosts your chances. It increases your chances inside the express entry pool. Okay, 22 now. Okay, I will put a 22 in 21. 
you will still follow FS entry or PMP to become a PR. I just explained that. Okay, these are the two, these are the two uh, major methods through which people become permanent residents after study. 